Hello everyone, my name is Robert Fawcett, also known as the Linux River Rat. Uh, today I'm going to actually show how I can create uh, art such as this. Uh, well, if you want to call it art and all that. Uh, but you can actually copy and paste images just exactly like this. Uh, if you notice here, this is uh, a piece uh, that was put together with uh, sprites from Super Mario Bros. 3. Of course, Super Mario Bros. 2, which is my favorite NES game of all time. And Kung Fu, which is another one of my favorites too. Uh, obviously, nobody's ever seen this something like this before. I think it's really, really neat and all. Uh, how I can uh, take all the sprites and put them together. And how I put them together is using the free and open source software called GIMP. Uh, which stands for GNU Image Manipulation Program. Uh, it is free and open source software. It runs on Linux, which is what I'm actually running it on, on my Super Rat Rig. Uh, it runs in uh, Mac OS and also runs in Windows. Probably it runs in FreeBSD, but I don't know because I don't mess with that stuff. So anyways, uh, let's go ahead and have some fun here. Now I do want to let everybody know that I actually get my... Uh, uh, document or get my uh, artifacts, my NES artifacts from www.spriders-resource.com. Um, as you can see here, switching to full screen, I'm going to use this tile set. And right now, just looking at this, you're probably wondering, well, how can you do anything with this? We'll just watch and see. Pretty much all I'm going to be doing is copying and pasting. So without further ado, Let's go ahead and get started on our image. First off, I'm going to save this. And before I proceed any further, uh, it says here on this uh, tile sheet, all this crap was ripped by Dr. Schnapps of drschnapps.com, the news, or pardon me, the NES rules, you all. And most definitely, I agree with that. Dr. Schnapps, thank you very much for making this tile set. Want to give credit where credit's due. Uh, anyways, let's go ahead and save this here. And throughout this video, I will be doing um, speeding up of the video because of the fact that this can get very boring just copying, pasting, copying, pasting, copying, and pasting. But anyways, going to go ahead and save this and going on with the uh, video. After having saved that image from the uh, uh, spridersresource.com, it's necessary to open it up in GNU Image Manipulation Program, or AKA GIMP. We'll just call it GIMP. Anyway, switching to full screen here. Let's go ahead and just open that. I have it named the SMB2 tile set. So opening that up. So as you can see here, zooming in, got all these wonderful tiles that I can work with and that I can actually do uh, uh, very, very cool things and all that. But we're not done yet. I mean, we've got this tile set. Now you're probably wondering, well, what? how do we get this into like an image, like what you saw with the uh, Kung Fu image? Um, well, anyways, let's go ahead and just go to File, New. And I'm actually going to make an image. I'm gonna make sure that it is landscape. We're gonna make sure that this image is 1920 width and pixels by 1080. So we're making this uh, image 1080p. So now I have just a blank canvas. So as you can see here, I've got my background here. Well, the very first thing that I want to do is uh, want to let everybody know that if I'm going from the tile set to this, I'm actually using the key combination Alt tab, just like you would on a uh, Windows PC to switch from one application to another. Same thing in Linux for when using GIMP. So Alt tab. I actually, it's the same thing with regard to. Uh, I think I think for a Mac, it's like Command tab or whatever it is. It's been a while since I've used a Mac and all that. So, anyways, here we got our tile set. I say the first thing that we need to do is is this. Um, first thing we absolutely need to do is we need to go to get a good background. So first thing I'm going to do here is that I'm actually going to go ahead and steal. I see here. This is the. Uh, uh, daytime here both these images right here I think I'm gonna actually steal from this right here set foreground color so there I've got my blue because it's associated with this cloud and all that stuff so we're gonna use that for the sky alt tabbing back we're just gonna dump this 
and make the entire background there blue. Uh, one thing I will recommend is, is that you do want to save your image that you're working on. Let's just call this SMB to art. So saving it, I use control S. I'm a big fan of keyboard combinations. Definitely get used to them and all that. But anyways, we've got our background here. This is our sky. Now you're probably thinking to yourself, well, okay, what about, you know, the other things too? Kind of how I work, um, uh, and I got this uh, tip from actually watching a, a, a Bob Ross program, uh, believe it or not. Um, I don't know how to paint, but the way that I, or something that I notice when watching Bob Ross is, is that you start out with layers. Like you put down a base layer, then you put things on top of that, then you put things on top of those things, and so on and so forth. So you kind of work from the back all the way to the front. Uh, uh, and I know that for you art people out there, they're like, well, duh. But the thing is, though, for me, come on, I'm not an artistic person when it comes down to it. Uh, I can copy and paste, though, and get things aligned and all that. So let's go ahead and, uh, I don't know, let's make an island. I, I want to do that. So I'm going to do this. We've got our water tiles right here. Uh, this right over here, if you look over here. Sorry, I'm uh, zooming in by doing the uh, control on the scroll wheel, and I can easily zoom in. Uh, what you see here is basically waterfall art. You could probably use that as your, uh, uh, like a lake or something like that, or for uh, uh, an ocean. But I'm actually going to use this over here, which I believe is from the level 4-2 or 4-1. Actually, I think it's used in both, the one with the whales and all that. So I'm going to go ahead and use this rectangle selector here and I'm actually just gonna go ahead and grab both of these trying to get this a nice perfect uh, rectangle now of course we got this blue here we're gonna get that taken care of so do not worry about that and also we got some purple here here I really don't like that purple we're gonna get rid of that too so anyways we've selected the uh, pixels that we need to select control C alt tab now we're going to go ahead and paste. Now if you notice, it pasted it very, very, very small. Well, a couple of things that we need to do here. First off, I pasted this as a floating selection. I'm going to go over here, right click, and select new or make it to go to new layer. That way it's on our thing here. Uh, also, I'm going to rename this paste and layer. I'm going to edit layer attributes and I'm going to call this ocean alrighty next thing we need to do is we need to actually get this to a proper scale so I'm going to do that by clicking on the layer right click scale layer and instead of going by these pixels I'm actually going to go by a percentage and one thing I want to let you guys know, you want to make sure that this is uh, click, this chain here. Because whatever you do, whatever you put in here, say if I'm going to put 400, which generally for the Super Mario Brothers 2 art, I always go four times bigger than the uh, tile set. Because that makes things look really, really nice and in proportion to the uh, picture and all that. So, anyways, going to go ahead and do this. Now, quality, the interpolation. I always set this to none and the reason being is so that you can actually get a good uh, crisp paste, a uh, good crisp scale when it comes down to it. So if you scroll in here, see how that looks really really good? So it scaled it appropriately four times uh, what we pasted. Now I'm going to actually revert going to control Z. So if you make a mistake in anything, control Z is your friend. So what we're going to do is this, we're going to scale and we're going to have that interpolation in there. And we're going to do it with cubic. Now watch this. Scale it four times, not 40,000 times. Scale. And look at that. That's a mess. That looks absolutely awful. The NES did not look like that. So we are not going to use any kind of interpolation whatsoever. So control Z. And scale layer going back to 400.00. No interpolation, and we're good. 
do a quick save here. Now, as you can see here, this part right here is the top of the water. This right here is the bottom of the water. So we need to separate, we need to do a couple of things here. One, we need to separate these out. There should be two ocean parts. So having that layer selected, we want to make sure we have ocean selected because remember, we're going in layers. Whatever I do to one layer, other layers should not be affected. But anyways, I've got the ocean layer selected. I've selected the bottom part. I'm going to do Control X, which as everybody knows, that means to cut. And then I'm going to do Control V in Linux or paste. And that pasted a floating selection. Well, it pasted the floating selection. I'm going to right click on this new floating layer and paste it to new layer. So what I just did there, uh, we're going to go ahead and select the move icon here so I can move this around. This paste layer here, as you can see, it is now separated from the uh, uh, from the from this guy right here. So as you can see here, it is separated. Now, there's a couple of things that we need to do here with this other part of ocean. Uh, let's go ahead and uh, before we proceed any further, we're going to name this part right here, the part that we cut away. The bottom of the ocean, we're going to call that bottom ocean. Now we're going to go back to the ocean layer, and this is what we're going to do. We got to get rid of that purple. I don't like that purple being there. So what I'm going to do is, is this. I am, since I've got the ocean parts uh, selected, we're going to go to the layer menu, transparency. Color to alpha. And what we're going to do is selecting from where it's this, this white bar here. We're going to click that and there's this eyedropper here. What we're going to do is we're going to take this eyedropper and we are going to select that purple because I want to get rid of it. Click OK. And then OK again. There, that got rid of that purple there. Now this bottom part here, it wasn't affected, but that's because of the fact that it was a different color. So what we're going to do is, uh, since we did get rid of that purple, we're just going to select the part that we need there. Or actually, why don't we do this? We don't even have to select, we can actually crop. Oh, another thing is, is this, if you have a bunch of items selected, if you need to deselect, Control Shift A. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to actually crop. However, we only want to crop the current layer only. So in the left part here, we only want to crop the current layer so that way we are not messing up the rest of the uh, image there. We don't want to uh, mess up uh, mess up the entire picture. We just only want to go one on one specific layer. So anyways, I've got the area selected that I need to. The good thing is is that the boundaries will not go outside of the boundaries of the current selected layer. So that's good. So once I've got my area selected, I just go ahead and click enter. Or you can use the mouse key, but I like enter. And then there we go. It's cut away everything. And as you can see here, to give you an idea as far as uh, what's just happened here, I'm going to go ahead and using this I over here, this I command, uh, this I icon, if I click on it, that removes the background so that I can see what I'm doing. And as you can see here, it's replaced by some checkerboard thing. Uh, I'm guessing that's the alpha channel. Just guessing, not sure. But the thing is, though, is that I can see right through it. The alpha channel is not going to show. Uh, if I was to actually export this to a JPEG, uh, or a, uh, a GIF or whatever, that alpha channel is not going to show. It's just going to be blank. So what we're going to do is this. I think we need to make the bottom part of the ocean right here and the top part of the ocean mash it together. So what I'm going to do is place this right here. And sometimes it's actually easier to do this without the background. 
to do this with the alpha channel so that you can get things lined up at least that's what I find and then you just uh, use the cursor keys to get it placed appropriately so as you can see here that looks pretty good go from the top layer here and what we're gonna do is just right click on the top layer here which technically it's the uh, bottom of the ocean is the top layer if we needed to actually move a layer down we can actually just take the selected layer and just click this arrow here to move that layer down so now everything's proper anyways clicking the top layer here ocean we're gonna merge down with the ocean bottom or bottom ocean and as you can see here instead of it being two parts we now have it being as one and this is where we're actually gonna go ahead and zoom zoom through here and uh, cut and paste and pretty much repeat the whole dang process forgot to tell you guys one thing you're probably asking yourself well wait a minute uh, you show me how to put the ocean together and all this stuff how do you easily duplicate well I use the keyboard command control shift D such as this with the current layer selected control shift D select the layer and then just move it over to the right and then repeat now we're gonna go back to zooming And now, since I'm basically halfway through making my ocean, I can actually make my life a whole lot easier by just uh, uh, merging everything, merging the whole ocean together. Remember, I work in layers whenever I make any kind of like Super Mario Brothers 2 art or NES art, so I can always paste something over the ocean. Uh, so what we're gonna do is, is this, I'm just gonna go ahead and merge everything and since I've got everything, uh, uh, I don't have the background there, what I'm going to do is, is that I'm actually going to remove the background. And since I've got only ocean showing, I'm going to use the key combination control M to merge everything instead of right clicking one at a time. So control M, expand as necessary. And then we got bottom ocean all uh, done. Actually, let's just rename this ocean. So we got that. Now because of the fact that uh, I've got this big ocean here made, but it's not uh, completely filling up the screen, I'm going to go ahead and just do control D, the same thing, and guess what? That duplicated all our work. So I'm going to just save myself a lot of time and just do that. Now look at that. We've got an ocean with a background, a sky background, but we're not done yet. We need to make an island. So using the same exact method of copying, pasting, scaling, and uh, merging and all that stuff, we're going to make a quick island. So now we're going to go ahead and zoom through that entire process. There's one thing that I've actually noticed. I've noticed that uh, one sand block is a little bit different than the other one. As you can see here, the top part is brown and the, the top brown with the specks are brown and the bottom speck, uh, the bottom, uh, 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 bottom sand part with the specks is black. I'm gonna just go ahead and make everything black. So using my eyedropper, I'm gonna select black here for this pasted layer, for one of the pasted layers right here. And then we're going to use the spill tool and just spill black into each and every single dot. So as you can see here, we're going to go ahead and zoom through this because this is rather, rather boring. Now that looks actually really good. So what we're going to do is we're going to uh, merge these two layers and make an island.
Now that our island's built, we need to make a hill. Using the same exact process of going and finding our hill icons here, we are going to make a hill. And uh, let's see here. I actually always liked this red part here, this uh, red hill here. I always thought it was really, really pretty. So we're going to use that. Zooming through. I say for this hill, we actually make this hill four blocks wide. So what I'm going to do is, is that I'm going to actually duplicate the middle. So we're going to go ahead and do that. So anyways, we've got this here. So you're probably saying, well, your, your hill's like really, really, really high and all that stuff. And I'm like, and I understand that when it comes down to it. But here's the thing here is that uh, uh, I make usually like an object like that, anything that has height, I've found that it's actually better to make it as tall as possible because here's what we can do. Uh, we're gonna put this in the background here. The hilltop we're going to put it just in front of the background there so as you can see here whenever I did that that actually made the uh, hilltop go behind the water another thing we can do is, is this because of the fact that I made it as high as possible what we're going to do is move this down to wherever I need it just because I make it so tall and all that stuff doesn't mean that I can hide the doesn't mean that I can't hide the bottom uh, from elsewhere so I'm going to just put this right here and just offset it a little bit right here so what we're going to do is we're going to add some trees now. So as you can see here, I actually made my uh, tree pretty tall as well. But it's just one of those things we can hide it in the background so let's go ahead and do that here we'll hide it here on this island there we go perfect so what we're going to do is, is this we're going to copy a couple of trees here and we're actually going to place them at different heights all righty now we need to add some clouds So something that I actually like to do is, is this. I actually like to use the uh, a grid uh, whenever making any type of art. And what I mean by that is, is this. Think of it as like a uh, concept from photography and all that. So I'll show you exactly what I'm talking about here. Show to grid. Show grid here. Ooh, that's not good. So right now we have this grid and it's a freaking mess. I don't like this. Uh, because of the fact that I know that my width is 1920, if I'm not mistaken, just counting this up here, I'm using the uh, uh, nine rectangle grid here. So 1920 divided by three, I'm gonna have 640 pixels across. So going to uh, uh, image, configure grid, and our spacing is actually going to be done in pixels. So 640 for my width. So as you can see right there, that makes it really, really nice. And if I'm not mistaken, 1080 divided by three 
360. Oh, make sure to unchain that. 640, 360. There we go. Got my grid there. Now, I will say this much. I always kind of like to make things kind of uh, proportional here. So probably what I would like to do is, is maybe uh, put this, let's see here, this tree, maybe just the palm tree right here dead center. Make sure that we're not messing up our hilltop so that we can hide the tree behind it. So right about there. And then kind of do this. Let's, uh, yeah. Something like that. Now, what I'm going to do is, is that, uh, copy the clouds and all that stuff and kind of get them in, uh, making it where it's not so much a jumble mess when it comes down to it. And last but not least, we need to add our hero. And we're done. Not too bad of an image using nothing more than a bunch of ti uh, just a tile set that uh, Dr. Schnapps actually put together and all that, whoever he may be. Thank you very much, Mr. Do or, uh, Dr. Schnapps. I really appreciate that. But anyways, as you can see here, uh, this was actually made with free and open source software running on a Linux machine and all that. So is it Photoshop? No, but it's free. Uh, not as not only as free as in like free beer, you know, but also free as in respecting your software freedom, so people can make good art like this. Uh, last but not least, uh, you actually want to export this. I'm going to export this as a GIF. Export as, or I can do a PNG. But anyways, quite honestly, I don't know the difference from one to the other. All I know is is that uh, JPEG images don't seem to. Uh, uh, save in a good quality, even though whenever I save it at 100 and all that stuff. So I'm going to just do this as a GIF. The image you were trying to save as a GIF contains layers which extend the land. Yeah, that's fine, because of the fact that what they're talking about is that hill, because I made it so tall, well, it extends beyond the actual borders. It's fine. Crop it. Created with GIMP by Robert Fawcett. AKA Linux River Rat. And then if we actually go to that there, go to the uh, documents. And as you can see here, whenever I open that up, there's my work. Expand that there. There's my actual work. So that ain't too bad and all that. I have to say that I'm. Uh, Pretty impressed with coming up with something like that in 50 minutes, actually, looking at the recording time right now. Would have done it faster had I not been making a video. But anyways, uh, want to let everybody know that this software is freely available to anyone. Uh, it respects your software freedoms, which is really, really key and all that. Uh, so uh, hopefully, uh, maybe, I don't know, if someone gets uh, this video and whatnot, they can maybe go on and do bigger and better things. And, me just uh, copying and pasting Super Mario Brothers 2 art. But I will say something though, doing this is just very, very calming. I absolutely love it. Anyways, I hope everybody enjoys this video. I hope you enjoy the art here. Thank you very much. Really appreciate it and all that. So check back in with me if I have other videos or if I'm streaming on Twitch. I'm a pretty good Galaga player. Uh, not too bad when it comes down to it. Uh, but anyways, take care and thank you for enjoying this video.